Metrics. Here are three metrics you cannot ignore as an e-commerce manager managing a website to increase your e-commerce growth through SEO. The first metric is sales. Sales from SEO only. Now this can be a bit difficult because there's a couple of nuances which means that sometimes it includes branded traffic from people who already know you and I'll cover how to detect that in a moment. The second is a click growth. So how many people are actually coming to your website now? Is that number increasing for the keywords that you're targeting in SEO? So you take the keywords that you're targeting, look on Google Search Console and figure out where the trend is going in terms of the number of clicks coming to your, through to your site. The third is the number of SEO transactions. Now, this is sometimes more important than the total sales value. This is because the first time people interact with you and purchase with you from SEO is likely to be, first it's going to be a high conversion rate, but secondly it's likely to be a lower transaction value, which means that the lifetime value is much more, and that means that overall they're going to be a valuable customer for you, but their initial sales value, or the total amount of sales from SEO initially, is likely to be lower. Therefore, it's always good to measure the total transactions instead because you can get an understanding of how that is in comparison to other sources and other channels. Now, some of the e-commerce managers I speak to, they're often measuring SEO from literally a, a purely a traffic point of view, so how many people are coming to the website. Now, this is not only a vanity metric, it's also a bit misleading and, and um, deceitful because it actually tells you how many people are coming to the website, including people coming from um, other, other sources, it includes coming from social. You need to make sure you're firstly splitting down by source, so um, by channel, so SEO, and seeing that organic search, and secondly, then splitting that down by whether they're new user or existing user. And this comes back to my first point. When you're measuring sales for organic SEO, make sure that you've got a split down of branded and non-branded searches because it makes a difference. Branded searches is when they know you already. You can work this out using either Google Search Console or Google Analytics. So Google Search Console will give you a good, a good indication of a percentage between branded and non-branded terms. Google Analytics, however, will give you a good indication of new users. So how many people from SEO are new users, i.e. they've never visited your website before. So make sure you split, split out that brand and non-brand thing because that makes sure that you've got good um, metrics to measure and you measure it out the same way each month. I'd recommend even doing it quarterly and having a North Star metric to make sure that you're actually heading towards that every single month. What I'd recommend for 2021 is actually splitting down you know, what they are currently because you can't really measure a goal unless you know where you are now and where you want to be and then how you're getting there on the journey. So the key thing is to make sure your team is clear what your metrics are, make sure you've got them set in stone as to what you want them to be and what the journey looks like to get from here to there and what you need to optimize to achieve that. Now, do you measure your SEO metrics? Let me know in the comments below. I'll be really interested to know if these three are the ones you're already measuring or if you measure some others or, or perhaps you may even be measuring the vanity metrics we spoke about earlier.